Hey, everybody! Welcome to Tales from the Closet! This is a podcast about being in the closet and being out of it. Getting out of there. Uh, if, you, if you're currently in the closet, we're here to keep you company. Put in those headphones, take a walk, and journal, read, plan your escape from wherever you currently are. Uh, <laughs> we have a very fun episode today. I am joined by three people I consider friends. Yeah, we'll yeah. find out a little bit more <laughs> as the podcast continues. Um, and uh, for those of you who have subscribed to Dropout, thank you so much. Uh, that's where we get literally 100% of our support, uh, emotionally and financially. Um, so thank you so much for supporting this podcast. It is Five ninety nine a month. No one asked me to do this. Why am I doing this? It's it's five ninety nine a month, and you get unlimited access to a bunch of shows that I put my blood, sweat, and tears in. Uh, so check it out. You also get a week free with promo code Blue Apron. Just kidding. No. Um, <laughs> uh, let's get right into it. I want to talk to you guys. Uh, how about introduce yourself? Who are you? Welcome to the show. Hi. Okay. Um, I'm Mia Folick. I'm a musician. Um, my pronouns are she, her, and I guess I identify as in a relationship with a woman. <laughs> so, I guess I'm pretty bi. Yeah. yeah cool, I, cool. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I identify as shackled. <laughs> as whipped, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. identify as whipped and uh, a good boy. Um, okay. Yeah. Hey. Uh, I'm Lauren Early. I'm a musician. Uh, I go by she, her. I identify as down for whatever, <laughs> like cool. queer or bi. Cool. I'm also shackled. Yeah. Um, yep. Cool. And lastly, hey, I'm Marianne Lipino. I'm a musician as well. I go by she, her, and I am gay as the days long. <laughs> <laughs> a gay one. Not shackled either. So. Oh shit, Ooh. baby. Uh, all of your social media handles just appeared under your name, so hey, check those DMs. <laughs> um, so desperate. <laughs> I'm not shackled, actually. Uh, uh, well, thank you so much for being on this show, guys. We usually, uh, at the top, um, we talk about how you came out. What was that like? Uh, I'm sure for a lot of people it happens a lot of times over and over. What's one memorable one for good or for bad? Uh, oh. Anything that comes to mind. Yeah. Um, so I guess for me, um, I've been pretty out in Los Angeles <laughs> and amongst um my like circle of friends and in music and in like the art world basically just like everybody who knows me in LA probably would be surprised that I wasn't out to my family until recently mm. um I just didn't feel like it was important to tell them. <laughs> um, you laugh at that? I, like, like, <laughs> I'm, I was just like well why do they need to know that it's just like um just excessive information but in in hindsight I think it probably would have been nice to include them in maybe some of that um journey just because they had a lot of questions and I think they were worried that I had felt like scared or oppressed and like afraid to tell them which I was mm. um anyway the reason I came out to my parents is because I had a show at the Troubadour and my girlfriend was coming <laughs> and so was my family oh, no. <laughs> so I was like okay I think I should probably inform them before this show <laughs> just b because I respect my girlfriend and I don't I I didn't want it to be a situation where she had to like Pretend, pretend to be, your friend. To be oh, my friend, yeah. or like oh, no. you know, exactly. like horrible. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I was with my friend Annika. I remember Annika was like trying to figure out what she was gonna wear to some party, and I was standing in her room on the phone with my mom, just being like, "Um, so at the show, the Troubadour, um, 
anyway, I, I've been dating somebody, and uh, and it's a woman. She's coming to the show, and my mom was just like, "Okay," and that was it. <laughs> really? That was it. A little that bit was of shock, it. or like, what do you she think? was. I don't think they were that shocked. I first told my sister, and my sister was like. Nobody surprised me. Yeah. Nobody surprised. Get over yourself. <laughs> um, yeah, I was like never um never really gay until I was like twenty. But of course like I always presented myself like this and so my family always thought I was gay and it was like an annoying like my grandparents would be like well you know like uh if you ever brought a woman like we uh support that (laughs) um and then like obviously like it became a thing and then I just like because of that it was like kind of embarrassing in this way because it totally appeared that I had been like super tortured my whole life and like keeping it a secret yeah and um but yeah anyway I moved I used to live in New York and then I moved to Los Angeles and uh I started dating a girl who's still my girlfriend and I was playing music and she was coming to my shows and I think um yeah I was like I told my dad that uh, my girlfriend, Kylie, would be at the show. And his, like, immediate response was, like, why do you need to, like, (laughs) he's just like, why are you telling me this? But it was definitely, like, a very, like, immediate defensive thing, but he's actually totally chill with it. Yeah. Oh, you mean, was he like, why are you telling me that she'll even be there? Or why are you telling me that you have a girlfriend? Or It was very vague, but definitely, like, the latter. Yeah. It is weird. It is kind of like a sexual thing that you're telling your parents when you yeah. come out. And you're I'm like, having sex with yeah. somebody. Yeah. Here's the specific <laughs> type of person I would rather have sex yeah. with. This is and the type like, of sex I'm t- having. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, yeah. I think that's what I did. I'm, we yeah. do not talk about sex in my... Same. It, like, yeah, yeah it forces forces you to like talk about the type of sex that yeah. you are having before yeah. like when I was dating men <laughs> it's like, hot it was just dad like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you cut your fingers and then yeah, you yeah. 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 <laughs> and your parents are like okay uh, well I'll be at your show <laughs> yeah I also um like I never told my family about anyone I was dating forever so then when I started dating women I was like well why is this any different but yeah in hindsight I definitely think that that was like convenient and allowed me to like avoid dealing with it totally Mm -hmm. yeah 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 I like it is crazy that for like straight it it somehow only feels like you're telling your parents about the sex you like to have when it is queer Mm -hmm. Mm because it's just so like assumed and like you're like I have a boyfriend and they're like oh okay it's over you know like yeah. they move on to the next thing with the girlfriend it's like wait a minute you know <laughs> and you're like don't take that second moment like <laughs> yeah for for me on my end it was like a mix of like total terror that I would lose everyone I loved and also just like why do you need to know too I was like yeah. you do it like doesn't seem to matter like who I'm like hooking up with but um, but I'd always known since I was like a kid, mm-hmm. so it was like a secret I had my whole life. Oh man! And then like, but it was like not a secret because like it's me. <laughs> like there's no way you can hide the gay. Like I was so <laughs> obviously like a little dyke. So um, so I think they always kind of knew. My brothers kind of figured it out when I was bringing girls over, and then my dad I think just wanted to be oblivious to it. But then eventually like understood what was going on and we had to talk about it eventually when I was like 25 like it took me a long time to get the guts totally um to tell him and by that point he'd already worked through it and like it was totally chill really so, yeah yeah he said he was proud of me for like the first time in my life what like he's fuck? never even said he's proud of me for anything else oh yeah I'll, I'll take that to my grave I'm so happy about it <laughs> so that's all you need to do from now on is just like be gay and yeah. that's you making your father proud yeah apparently <laughs> yeah I should give him more details then I guess <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
oh man yeah i will we have a friend who i won't say their name but is like if my mom could just see the women that i'm having sex with <laughs> like she would be so proud <laughs> i think that helped a lot in my coming out is that christine my girlfriend is like by far <laughs> the best person i've ever dated really? <laughs> like uh. like up to the point where my my cousins my uncles just basically all of my relatives when christine met them were like thank you oh thank you <laughs> thank you for being you and for dating mia because um yeah it was interesting up until now um and so i think yeah it was i i, I mean i have a great family and i honestly think they would have been supportive regardless but i think it helped it was like guess what i'm in a relationship with a woman and she's amazing yeah so like here we go like yeah. everything's kind of easy yeah i i mean i know i'm like obviously pretty biased but i'm just like the pool of people to date in the queer world versus like the cis hetero world is just like ugh. Yeah. <laughs> navigating like the cis abyss is just like <laughs> oh here's my boyfriend he is in arrested development and plays <laughs> video games all yeah. day and maybe he'll come to the door and meet you <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. this is my very successful queer girlfriend yeah. <laughs> who's like wants to come say hi and brought you like a bottle of wine <laughs> right you know it's right. just like just on a manners level alone. Yes, so yes. Real. The manners. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, okay, cool. Well, we are going to move uh, each episode. We have uh, a little topic to discuss. Uh, it's called our haunted word. It's usually a word that would haunt us uh, as four queer people. Uh, and today it is Gold Star. <laughs> Are you scared? I knew My heart is pounding. <laughs> yeah. The speaker's right behind. Storms of ruin. Uh, gold star. What does that make you guys think of? What do you... Do you like it? Do you hate it? It makes me think of uh, you because <laughs> <laughs> you taught me Excuse what me. the word gold star is. Interesting. Uh, yeah. When you lost your gold star. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait, when did you lose your gold star? Oh, it was yeah, a long time that. ago in Germany. Oh. Uh, we don't have to get into the details. But uh, he, in a German accent, told me that he was always a nerd growing up. And then he started rock climbing and got super buff. And then he saw the people who would bully him at a party. And he thought, no more violence. He's not going <laughs> to beat them up. And this was all in like a German accent where they like, for dates they say like 19 and 76. Uh, you know, like yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, thing yeah, with German yeah. accent. I was just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. Let's try this. Oh, <laughs> dang. Um, yeah. But what do you guys think? Um, well, it makes me think of somebody I dated. <laughs> um, and a particularly tense breakfast <laughs> that we had with another friend um, later on after we stopped dating and this is a woman mm -hmm. um, and we stopped dating but we remained friends and she's gonna hate that I'm telling <laughs> this story <laughs> but she is a gold star lesbian mm -hmm. I am not mm -hmm. <laughs> um <laughs> And I feel like she kind of always had this thing where, like, she thought that I wasn't actually, like, a lesbian or, like, into women. And I believe this was around when I was first starting to date Christine, my current girlfriend. Um, and over breakfast I was I basically just like was fed up with this like idea of me that she had and I was just like Fair. you just don't like that I'm not a lesbian for you Whoa. oh shit Oh, dang. Yeah. Shots fired. Yeah. And, and then everyone Rough. was like, oh. oh. Wait, everyone? Who else was there? My friend, Annika. Oh. It was oh, the other story. Hall. It was a banquet <laughs> There were three of us having breakfast, and I was just oh, like, you just shit. don't like that I'm not a lesbian for you. The entire restaurant. Oh. And, then, yeah. 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 and then it was just like silent. Oh, oh. But that, I mean, I uh, just, 
having to be a certain type of lesbian or yeah. a certain type yeah. of queer, I think that's part of the reason that I didn't come out to my parents is because like, yeah. clearly I've been attracted to men, so I can just pass as straight and then I don't have to tell anybody yeah, yeah, <laughs> until totally. I like fall in love with somebody and I'm like, oh, I guess people have to know this part of me now because I never was like, I couldn't be like, I'm a lesbian, mom and dad, mm -hmm. you know? Totally. It's just like, complicated and forces me to talk about sex it's like yeah. Yeah. well i'm attracted i have had dicks inside of me and i didn't hate it <laughs> but also dad. you know like yeah. <laughs> no totally it's such a different experience though because i'm more in the marianne camp where it's like i am gay i've always known this all i can think about are women yeah the, there's not really even a chance except of in me. germany except in germany <laughs> that's that my happen? switzerland honey <laughs> um no i mean there's not even a chance i would have dated that per i would have been like yeah, good yeah, friends yeah, with yeah, that yeah, dude yeah. um yeah. but it is like it's hard when we like self police ourselves. Mm. Like I've like women who are bi, I feel like I've had my heart broken <laughs> so bad by those people. So <laughs> we hard. Both have, yeah. yeah, and I don't and hold so, it against them, but it's and real. Exactly. Yeah. Like it's not a person's fault. It, mm. it's kind of like they could be interested in anyone. Right. So the idea of using gold star as like an insult or like a supremacy thing, I think is so fucked up. It's like yeah. okay, good for you. Yeah. You haven't yeah. experienced a lot of things. I don't know. That's just your specific experience. That's what I'm gonna say next time. Next good time? for you. You haven't experienced. Good a for lot. you. Wow. <laughs> but yeah. it's true. Just clap. There is well, like a competitiveness. Yeah, in it's weird. Queerness. That's yeah. Really weird. Like how totally. gay are you? Yeah. 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 Are and you gay like, enough? Are you trans like enough? It's like beyond sexuality. Mm. It's just like queerness and every sense of like I'm the most radical yeah. mm -hmm. like I'm the most inclusive yeah. <laughs> I'm the fucking gay it. like yeah. it's just stupid like, it's true live your life do it actually is like earnest and yeah. like feels good and if you're a super radical person that's cool yeah but, like and why do you need to like prove a point right of how radical you are yeah and i feel like at least for me i haven't even really heard the term gold star as much anymore like i feel like that's just not as much mm -hmm. in the vernacular as it used to be especially when i was like first coming out like in the huge. early 2000s it was like the big deal i was, was asked like, if i was gold star all by the time almost every Everyone, queer person yeah. i met and oh, was able to really? be like yeah because i was a fucking virgin <laughs> from <laughs> christian college and it's just like i'm gold star truly in every way <laughs> like, how many stars can i get i can I'm list off a lot of things <laughs> untouched territory i'm untouched give me virgin a star land. uh <laughs> Yeah. Um, I, I kind of feel like it's like um, when you're like a minority group, you try to just raise to the top of that yeah. specific yeah. group in such a cutthroat way. And yeah. it's like, right. that doesn't help anybody. But yeah. in the same, f like in the, I, I'm kind of realizing now that it is, it is like a method of protecting yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think like, I, I understand that. Yeah. And it makes sense. And like, if I can't have a gold star, I'm totally fine with that. Um, <laughs> and do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, totally. Like I, I don't think I can speak to the experience of somebody who would call themselves a gold star lesbian and like feel protected by that. Like I, because I can pass as straight, and I have for so long. I feel like there's like a privilege to my position and like so i can't really mm, speak to really like i can't really yeah. judge it yeah to talk about passing privilege is like really interesting too i think with gold star on it i, I can only speak for myself but it's kind of like uh like non-monogamy i feel like i like clung to that idea for a mm. really long time because i was like if there's no cheating that's possible no one will ever cheat and yeah. no one will ever get hurt yeah. and then it took me going to therapy to be like okay let's like raise our expectations for like what a relationship yeah. could be like not everyone's gonna like leave you yeah. uh, and I feel like it's gold star it's like if I'm only with people who are only interested in women no one will leave yeah. me like there's yeah. no sneaky men involved it's like anyone yeah, could yeah, leave yeah, yeah. Yeah. for it's any like a, yeah. reason it's like yeah. a control mechanism right. it's like gold that. star is like safer than yeah. like a bi person 
person, which is just like biphobia. And in a way, like gold star, yes. I think, is like a rough term that I like. There's no, there's you. You haven't like achieved anything necessarily. It's just like an indication of your preference. If anything. totally, yeah, yeah. Well, and they and they give you a necklace. What? Yeah, yeah. They give you a necklace <laughs> oh, at the no. award shows. You've never been? Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's called the Glad Awards. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I love talking about passing privilege, though. Where do you guys feel with that? Do you feel like you pass? Do you feel like you don't? In the patriarchy, don't we just all pass? And <laughs> I mean, I've been, I'm like generally like a PDA person, and I've been in relationships with women for like seven years now, and I think across the board, uh, it's always been with someone who's straight passing, and like maybe my outfit says otherwise but like <laughs> I'm generally straight passing mm -hmm. and it's always blown my mind that like I've been so publicly like in your face gay for so long and I've literally never had like a public encounter like, like where someone yells at no you? No one has ever heckled me in these situations and it's 100% because we're always like straight passing like cute girls wow mm. yeah that's really interesting and i'm totally completely aware of that it's like the squeaky clean like palatable lesbian version yeah. you think yeah i we i got yelled at in my car not even a month ago <sighs> what by happened? a woman in a large blazer who <laughs> didn't have a home so that's oh, like part okay. of it okay so maybe was like suffering a mm. psychotic break right, or something from the sun but was just like screaming faggot at us oh, and geez. was trying to like get into the car and it was what? like truly so scary oh, yeah man. wow and i didn't know that that would happen in fucking la right. like that was crazy yeah yeah they're still out there i've seen stuff happen in la but i also haven't had anything really happened to me yeah like that and i'm also not a big pda person mm. and also i'm usually like with like more straight presenting <laughs> girls you know so but so i wonder if that is part of it but like also it's like kind of annoying in a sense because because i pass inadvertently like dudes will just hit on us or me all the time, which is a nightmare. I'm yeah. like, I, how can I look more gay to make you stop doing this, please, sir? Oh, oh my god, god. much so more like a little boy. Such a fool of yourself. Do yeah. they see the necklace that you got at the Glad Awards? <laughs> but I'm not a gold star, so I can't. I can't get it. I missed out. Damn. Oh, so none of us are. Fuck that. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Um, I fuck think that shit. Um, part of the privilege that I that is like really obvious to me like as a like a musician solo mm -hmm. artist is that it benefits me to be to look like something that could be sexualized by a man oh that's really interesting do you know what i mean yeah. um so i think that's more of like the privilege that and also just like being able to exist in like different spaces mm. yeah. yeah um but but th that's what always comes to mind is like that sort of like sexualizing me as an artist and in my image and who is it for? I don't know. I'm sure I've benefited from looking yeah. like a straight woman. Mm, um, mm -hmm. And then I've also benefited from looking like a queer woman. Totally. Yeah. So yeah. Just like, uh, who, who knows? But I think that's like part of the privilege that has to be like acknowledged when you're like performing or you're like in public totally mm -hmm. yeah to be like a performer i was at uh i spent like three years in amsterdam performing at like a comedy theater and i once got a note that was i was doing like a little opening stand-up bit uh about being uh, gay and he was like throw in a line about like but I'd suck a dick <laughs> literally was the note what? I mean, isn't that like <laughs> what yeah we have two people a gas and more don't want to alienate burst anyone out <laughs> immediately. Exactly. Just don't even he was just oh like God. it's the top of the show we don't want to alienate over what? half over half of the audience oh is what was said and I was because like there's no other reason what? to listen to you exactly yeah. other than, like, and I'm in a literal just... like blazer like suit <laughs> Like it's that's what it, that was my show outfit, and I was just in this little like pant navy suit. And like, but I'd suck a dick, I promise. Are you listening? And Please. they're all like, "Yeah, don't go to the bathroom, 
Doomsday. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe we should all before we perform make it clear. Yeah. <laughs> I'm available to everyone for your sexual needs. Yeah, fully. <laughs> it was just like that. Wow. This was crazy. That's dark. To anyone watching, I might suck your dick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I might. You just never know. But sign up for Dropout. <laughs> Dropout.tv. Five ninety nine a month, and you get access to. I just watch the camera like slowly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. Uh, uh, what do you guys think about the idea of like straight passing? That still feels really sexist, right? It's still like, yeah. It, I don't know. It still feels very like rooted in patriarchy. The idea of like straight passing because for like queer women, everyone's fucking straight passing. That's mm-hmm. like how thirsty the culture right. is. And then for men to be straight passing, it's like, well, do you fucking look like a woman? Or you know, like, yeah. It's like, I feel like more women are quote unquote straight passing and less men are straight passing mm-hmm. because like, it's just like a witch hunt for feminine women. It's yeah. like, you're not, you know, yeah. even straight men aren't straight passing. I have a lot of like oh, yeah. very gay seeming straight male friends who I love. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I really do. <laughs> and I fucking love them. Uh, yeah. But then I feel like at this particular moment in time, there are a lot of sincerely straight people who think queerness is cool right. and present as yeah. queer. It's very confusing. And it's um, very confusing. Uh, if you go to Portland, you're like, what's up, baby? Yeah. No, everyone's straight. It's a lie. It's a yeah. sham. I mean, seriously, it's in every flannel, you're just like, what? Did yeah. you bring a grappling hook? Like, are you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've been saying now for years. Everyone looks like Tomb Raider. And <laughs> it's really sexually confusing for me personally Absolutely. that every woman, you know, presents as Tomb Raider. <laughs> <laughs> wow, mega crush. On Tomb Raider? Yeah, back me in too. the day. Absolutely. Me too, dog. <laughs> <laughs> we played all of them. My gay brother got all of the. All the video games we got were completely like gender flipped. Oh my so god! So my brother had the one where you're the Spice Girls and you have to learn all the dances in time Wait, to get on the bus. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. That that's real. That's amazing. It was I would amazing. Play that. But wow. it was his choice, and I was always just like, "What weird game did Brad get?" And it was always like <laughs> Tomb Raider or Spice Girls. And I was playing like shoot 'em up games. I was yeah. like, oh, "Okay, we'll play your game." I, like, oh, I actually love Tomb Raider. <laughs> How could you um, not? Okay, well, this uh, we got special questions this week uh, that are maybe more like musician uh, specific, uh, since I don't think we've ever had three musicians on the podcast before at a time. Uh, so these are for the first time off of Instagram. Usually we do an anonymous survey. Uh, and so, please, everyone, if you're listening and you have a question for us, please send it in. We'd love to answer it. We don't know if they want their handles Oh, I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. We're making sure I don't read the handles uh, to keep these anonymous. They're all cute, though. They're all great handles. <laughs> um, okay, first question. You guys ready? Yes. It's hot in here. Are you guys hot? Yes. Okay, great. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Have you ever felt forced by the music industry to conform to heteronet? Uh, heteronormativity in your music no 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 in fact I think that um, they the like it when you're gay <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's like, yeah it's gross it's like a fucking like trending thing and they, yeah. they think it's something that they can sell Ooh. which is related to straight people like queering themselves up I feel like we mm-hmm. have to talk about yeah, and that I mean, article that can came we just out? like I don't I we don't even need gay. to discuss it. Wait, what? See, I'm just waiting for her to say she's gay, and then I'm like, okay, then I don't have to like, then I don't have to like pick apart your music video and talk <laughs> about how it's yes. like co-opting gay culture. If you can just say like, are you queer? Okay, yes. then I'm then I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm cool with it all. Yeah, like what am I missing? What is she doing? She put What's out a new music to? video called. Um, calm down or you should calm down or something like that where basically she kind of conflates her haters with people who hate on queer people and then there's like a bunch of gay icons in the music video and it's just like 
is this I'm all about people like allowing people to come late to like yeah. the party and it's like if late. she just yeah. wants to support LGBT p- people now and it's kind of late and it's kind of in like a weird selfish manner yeah. <laughs> um, like fine but it's just confusing yeah. I'm, I don't know what's happening Got but it. it's like I think it's this like pinnacle of of like queer culture being useful for marketing is like Mm -hmm. Taylor Swift definitely Mm -hmm. yeah yeah there was an onion headline that said Taylor Swift inspires young woman to take center stage of the gay rights (laughs) or like inspires young straight woman to take the center (laughs) of attention from the gay rights community or something well we'll wait with bated breath yeah I I surely will I'll wait with bated breath to see if Taylor Swift is queer or not. <laughs> yeah. No way. I think she is. Right. I mean, what? Well, it's is. like I would never. I would bet against it. Really? Yeah. Ten bucks. Can't wait to find out, Taylor. Ten, Ten bucks. Ten bucks. Wow. Well, I want right. to see a it shake. It kind of makes I'll, sense. I will. I think no. about like, give it to me. Everyone's gay. <laughs> Just like <laughs> these like high profile Everyone's relationships. Everyone's queer, everyone's gay, it's everyone's true. thought about it. If you're listening but to this we would right also, now... We would suck your dick, probably. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everyone's gay, but I would still have sex with you, <laughs> sir. Um, okay, great. Next one. Uh, has writing music about personal experiences ever been triggering or difficult for you? Y- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. Like, your mom is gonna hear this song mm, mm-hmm. and, and and I guess maybe just that's specifically for me because I think there are certain things that I talk about with these people and certain things I talk about with these people and I'm they, there's it's not necessarily all the same people but I think yeah and then you have to like perform that song every day on the road mm-hmm. in front of people whether or not you feel like it and it can be it can be hard, but you know, it's a choice you make. You decide to make that song or not, and just know whether or not you're up for it. And also, you can just delete it from the internet forever if you don't want it anymore. <laughs> can you? That's really interesting, though. Have you ever written no, I don't think uh, you can. <laughs> like a song that you had like a lot of passion for? And then I would assume you lose that passion on the road. But how do you refine it? How do you find how to play that song so many times? Whew. All of you. Yeah, all of you are just shaking tough. your heads like the fucking road. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Well, I mean, for the first question, I feel like I don't like name drop in songs mm-hmm. like. I guess that's fine, but like I feel like I genu I generally like write in like a more abstract way, and I'm not trying to like I'm act I'm like mindful of that, and I'm not trying to like single anyone out. Yeah, publicly. Um, I don't know. Well, road, have you ever you know? written about something that was specifically triggering for you, or are you saying like yeah, that's when you go like more abstract? Sad songs for sure. Totally. But I'm not. Uh, I'm okay with being triggered. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Cool. As cool. an artist, honestly, that's kind of what you're signing yes. up for in some yeah, way. It's kind it's of your real. job. Yeah. How's that? <laughs> How's that feel? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I do play the drums. I'm a drummer, uh, so I just like I'm just. <laughs> well, float do you write? Free. Do you write songs or do you? Not really. I'm trying to get into it, but like I can't even imagine like putting like those words on the page, you mm. know, and like that kind of stuff out there. That's like really intense. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, thank you for doing the heavy lifting. Yeah, I'm just here. People over here. Well, you have to like bring all your crap. That, yeah, That's I, the I heavy do a lifting. different heavy lifting. You come in with one microphone. Uh, Click. I'm ready. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, you already did all the hard work before the tour. Yeah. Oh, think, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I like. Christine, who I've brought up a million times, is also <laughs> we get it. Also, you're whipped. <laughs> is also a musician and a songwriter. We talk about this all the time because we talk about like our days are literally like this emotionally. Hmm. It's like it's good, it's bad, it's good, it's bad, and it, and it's like this is the life we've chosen, and some days it's really hard to accept that. 
Mm. And we complain a lot about everything we have to put up with. But when we're really like our best selves, we recognize that it is, it's a privilege to be able to process emotions as your job. And it is hard sometimes, but I think it generally leads to a, a more like full, fulfilling and interesting life. So mm, yeah, that's really do beautiful. It. But sometimes I'm just like, I hate this job and I want to quit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure, 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 this is sure. a hard fucking day. Yeah, it's exhausting. Uh, Crafty was one bag of Cheetos <laughs> and it's been a 12 hour drive. Um, yeah, how do, you, how do you guys feel with like, I guess this is just to the two lyric writers, but do you, did therapy help you with that? Did like writing in a journal help you with that? Um, Poetry? I've, this is like so embarrassing to say, <laughs> but like, you might say it is my therapy. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally, totally. I don't go to therapy. I probably mm -hmm. should, but definitely like playing music really like brings me a lot of peace in that way. Yeah, it feels very cathartic, yeah. I would imagine, mm -hmm. to be able to write something and then perform it. It's so like emotive. Right. Um, great. Well, <laughs> uh, we have, let's see, we probably have time for one more question. So let's see. Uh, do you ever perform in places or countries that are homophobic? Do you think it's important? Um, yeah, I don't know if necessarily homophobic. I can't speak for an entire country, I guess. But, like, I definitely hate playing in Italy. Um, mm -hmm. With my band, um, La Luz, which is four girls. And... Um, there def there's definitely like a shift in the way that the sh the audience feels and especially the men watching and like we've had really like just kind of abrasive dudes that are like not stoked to see us up there Fuck. and are like clearly like pissed and it's terrifying and like that's not even having to do with like anyone being like queer it's just being a woman yeah. performing if they only knew half yeah, of you are also know. queer well I'll suck a dick man I'll suck a dick <laughs> <laughs> like terrifying um but and I can't speak for all of Italy I'm sure there's wonderful shows out there but we've just had so many bad ones that like and for other various reasons it's rough in Italy but like I, I don't I don't really want to perform there anymore Ooh. um but yeah, I don't know. What Damn. About you guys? But the food. Yeah, the food's all but right. But the spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, so sorry. It's worth it. Listening. It's worth all of it. The misogyny, <laughs> the fear. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've spent a lot of time in the past couple of years as uh, not performing my own music, but touring with a band that's all guys except mm. for me. And I mean, that's fucked up everywhere. Like, it's such a what to witness like the wildly different experience that they're having yeah, from what totally. I'm having there's basically just always a moment of complete blatant disrespect and yeah. and I respond to it oh and my so god so it's like always a thing of like who's that little fucking like cunt in the band no you know? way and then in yeah. Europe it's like yeah so much more intense yeah totally Oof. yeah that's crazy. It's I had, uh, who was it? One of our friends, she said like someone was asking, ah, again, I know nothing about music, so I'm gonna fucking <laughs> We'll help this you, we'll help you through it. But he just asked her, it was like a sound guy or something. Yeah. Oh. Like a jerk at like <laughs> yeah. a music festival. It was just like, oh. you have this turned on? And she was just like, yeah, but like. Yeah, like obviously. This is the most obvious question to yeah. ask me or something like that. Yeah, I mean, that kind Turner. of stuff happens all the time. Like I've witnessed like sound dudes like tell my bandmates how to wrap up their cables, like as if mm, we haven't been doing yeah. this like for what like, like two 200 days out of the year or something crazy you know it's just like absurd things um where they just feel like like they need to tell us what to do and it, it was crazy because i was in a band before that with two guys and two girls and it was like night and day the yeah. way they would just make a beeline to them ask them all the mm -hmm. technical questions ask them what i as a drummer needed but like not ask me and it was just oh super weird God. you know like just so really weird but that has really have it has nothing to do with like gayness or queerness but like but mm -hmm. if they knew yeah <laughs> maybe they'd be like all right you're on my level no, no yeah no i know way. that like Wish nightmarish for? yeah handshake that you get 
get from cis men when you're like, I'm gay, and they're like, so you like objectify women? Yeah, totally. Yeah, it like, gets no, weird as well. Gross. They're like, what about that hot girl? Yeah. He's like, no, I don't want to go down that path with you. Yeah. Either. Like, <laughs> just leave me alone, man. Fred. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever played like in a country that was homophobic politically or where gayness was illegal mm. not a Ill- not illegal yeah no. not that i know of i haven't no hmm. i've mainly done just like western european mm. places so i feel like they're usually chill right right <laughs> we're all like, where, where is it who where is it illegal? on my tour of russia yeah yeah my long and, uh, russian tour north korea yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd that was crazy. so crazy that you got to play in North Korea. Uh, um, can you imagine? <laughs> you wouldn't be here with us right now. You wouldn't come back. <laughs> you would not even. They, be you wouldn't you'd be, be in a coma. That's you'd too still be there. Um, yeah, you'd be in the. Uh, yeah, fuck. Well, I mean, even like honestly, the South, like where it's just a little bit less accepted. Mm. Have Have you guys played shows there? I guess you're not very like. I feel like, like people exist everywhere who yeah. suck right like, yeah e- like in la yeah totally mm-hmm. yeah there are a lot of, I, I just feel like it also depends on who you're touring with and what the fans are like and i feel yeah. like i tend to tour with bands with really nice fans and i also think i have really nice fans and really like accepting and open fans totally and like I don't think I'm big enough for people who are not fans of my music to care enough to like come to the show just to be an asshole. Right, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like people aren't out there being like, oh my God, Mia Folk's coming to town, that fucking Let's lesbian. Go boy, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, nobody cares. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's just like nice people, fans, and it's cool. And we have interesting encounters with with people when we're just like driving through, yeah. going to a diner, whatever. Totally. But honestly, people are like nice. And and it may have to do with the fact that I tour with three straight white men, <laughs> um, white. which is an interesting <laughs> dynamic. And then there's me, but well, but I mean, they, I think any guy who lives in LA looks gay to a lot of people who aren't in LA. <laughs> That's probably so, true. Like, what are you, I think, I think about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we'll go. I remember we were in a diner um, in the South, and these, this couple came up to us and just said, like, what are you guys? Oh <laughs> my just God. like, what, what are you? We're like, oh, we're, we're a band. Are you? Uh, and and are you? they're like, okay, be careful. And we're like, <laughs> okay. That's terrifying, actually. Um, yeah, that's, they were probably aliens, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Two aliens. <laughs> but I, we haven't really had any, er, I personally haven't really had any experiences with anybody in the context of music, like being like bigoted or right. rude to me. Mm. I have like outside of the context of music, but I don't know. Yeah. yeah. We've had fans do weird things, but again, not because I'm queer. It's so. just, just cause I'm me. Yeah. Just cause I'm little and easy to catch. <laughs> happen. Oh, I had a dude at a show kiss me, just like <gasps> drunk guy, just like came up God. and just like. Like on stage? No, or, I was like, like watching, like it was like, um, we were watching other bands. We had just That's played so or we were about to play. so romantic of him. Oh, oh, he was God. so wasted. It's like the beginning it was of a movie. terrifying. Just it's like, like that show. Got me. You. What's that crazy stalker show that's like really popular on Netflix? No idea what you're talking about, buddy. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> no, it does exist. It's somehow really popular. It's just about a man stalking a woman. And oh, it's like a brand new show. It's popular? Watch that. No. Anyway, um, oh, <laughs> that's, no. that's all the time we have for today. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much to my guests. <laughs> it, really? it really is. Uh, yeah, wait, did you have partying things? Yeah. Nah, it's uh, cool. Well, we are going to go one more time down the line. Uh, thank you so much for being on if there's anything you would like to plug where can people find you should you wish to be found <laughs> uh what's coming up for you mia um my name is mia folic you can find me on the internet um under that name everywhere uh i have a music video coming out soon Ooh. for my last um s- single song whatever you want to call it um malibu barbie yes 
I don't know when. Cool. Cool. <laughs> <But soon. laughs> cool. Very cool. I just want to plug the show You on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot Lauren starred in You on Netflix. Um, <laughs> oh my God. No, my name's Lauren Early. I just put out my first ever EP. Uh, it's really good. The internet's easy. You can find it. It's called Patience, but I chose that before both Tame and Paula and <laughs> uh, I don't Tame want to call it. Anyway. It's Enough. <laughs> a lot of people name their albums Patience. Actually, well, um, like a month before it came out, I was driving down Sunset Boulevard and there was just like the biggest <laughs> billboard in Los Angeles was just like Patience, Tame and Paula. No. Oh. Well, you just yeah. tapped into oh. the zeitgeist. Yeah, yeah there you go. Ta- there that's you a powerful go. thing. Yeah, Thank that's you. true. You yeah, tapped in. True. You tapped in. You tapped in. And you can also tap into the zeitgeist. <laughs> that's Lauren Early, Patience yeah. EP. Uh, thank you. <laughs> cool. And uh, you can find me touring. I'm going to go with Sasami on ah! in July through ah! August. Uh, my name is Marianne. Please only stalk me if you're a lady. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, thank you everyone for listening thank you for your questions please continue to submit questions and uh, let me know what you think Uh, I really like a DM I'm being sincere Uh, please reach out I love to talk to people who listen to this podcast especially if you are yourself closeted Uh, drop me a line okay I love you too bye Hey, what's up? It's Allie. If you like college humor and you want to support us, please sign up for Dropout. For the low, low price of a bag of crickets for your pet lizard, you'll get videos a whole week sooner to chat with us in the Dropout Discord and exclusive content such as my show, Total Forgiveness. By the twilight's last gleam. Sign up for your free trial today and please send me a picture of your lizard. (laughs) I want to see her. I want to see her dance.